Hello and welcome back to everyone that's tuned in to the American Ultra Stock channel. Love to have you guys here. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Today we're doing a video where I think every YouTuber out there in the USMNT sphere has done at some point. This is going to be our first shot at it. Granted, it's very difficult. It's predicting the 2026 roster. We're going for a 26 man roster because I think that's what's going to be the case. I think it's FIFA standing towards that very tough to predict uh, we're going to do our best please stay tuned and let us know position by position as we evaluate these players what do you think keeping in mind that two two years for the world of soccer is a decade sometimes things pop out of nowhere and Braden, with that in mind who are the goalkeepers one of the hottest topics who are the goalkeepers you predict will be in the 26th roster for the u.s well, just click quickly, I want to clarify that we're picking 26-man rosters just because that's what it's been at the last World Cup. That's what it was this summer for Euros, Copa America, and we anticipate it being the same. If it's something different, then maybe we'll make another video. So actually, let us know in the comments. Do you want to see us continue to make videos like these at certain points throughout the year? Maybe next summer, maybe even in January, who knows? But getting into the goalkeepers, this was actually the position group that I had the toughest time picking because I think for a good World Cup squad, and I don't know if this will be the case, you, you obviously need three goalkeepers. One of them should be the experienced guy, the locker room guy. That's what Sean Johnson was in 2022. He brought the experience. Obviously, he's not going to play. He's probably number three. Another one should probably be a young prospect, one of the brightest ones you have. Get him the experience of being at a major tournament, and hopefully he's ready for the future. That's We didn't really actually have one of those in 2022. It probably should have been Slanina but it is what it is and then the third one of course the starter regardless of age it could be a 17 year old it could be a 34 year old doesn't matter that's your best goalkeeper for that spot i went with probably a, a very unpopular opinion especially after the olympics uh, i went for patrick schulte and now to be clear if the development goes how we all hope it will that would be gaga slanina but i just think that with the loan to Barnsley, I think it's too low of a level. And then Slanina will really only have one season left to maybe play at a high enough level to win that spot, regardless of how well he does in League One this season. I just don't think it's enough. Schultz is playing for the best team in MLS. One of the only MLS teams that even has a shout to potentially beat some European teams. The Columbus Crew, such a well-run franchise, and Schultz has been so good for them. He was preferred to Slanina at the Olympics. I just think he'll probably end up being the starter. For the... The experienced guy, it's going to be Matt Turner. I don't think there's a world where he's not on the roster. I'd personally rather take Horvath. I think he has a better mentality, even though it seems that for interviews, he doesn't have much of a personality. Anything's better than Turner's mentality, but he's been with the team for so long as the starter. He's, I guess, a good guy to show Schulte the ropes. And then for the third one, I actually went for Diego Cochin. Uh, I think he's by far our brightest goalkeeping talent, probably one of the only elite talents that we have in terms of prospects at any position and i just think in two years time hopefully he'll be starting for some team maybe it's not in the first division but maybe he's starting in the second division of spain for somewhere uh, on loan and i just think that we need to get him at some experience at the world cup before hopefully he's the starter in 2030 so those are the three goalkeepers i went with i'm very curious to see if you went differently Maybe a hot take right there. Everyone's so high on Zlanina, but hey, honestly, I respect it. Honestly, it, I think I feel like Zlanina gets a lot of hype, and I've picked him right here, starting with my selections right here. But I don't think people really watched him last year for Eupen. I don't think people ever really watched him ever since he left MLS. There's still a lot for him to, to improve on. The loan that he got right now, I know you had advocated for a, a League One, but it was the wrong one. It wasn't the Strasbourg. I don't think this career trajectory is going to pan out for him to be a starter for 26. I don't really know what it will be. He's still so young, but I've picked him nonetheless because I think that by then, two seasons maybe he does well this year on loan gets a, a loan to the championship next year and does well there i think it's it's still possible next to him i have patrick schulte uh, i also don't think that he's the best of goalkeepers but it is what we have i think that if we compare what he's has done in mls compared to what turner did it's arguable that he was better than turner ever was there and i think by then he'll probably either be a solidified mls player for one of the best teams in mls or have gone to europe somewhere and for the third spot i'm going with matt turner I wanted to get rid of the guy, but I want to be realistic as well. He has the experience, whether we like it or not. I don't think he has the mentality needed even to be, a, a, honestly, an asset in terms of locker room. But I, I still think he's going to be there regardless. And we don't have that many good goalkeepers. So 
those are the three I've gone with. Moving on to the fullbacks, perhaps a position where we're more stacked, we're more secure. Who are the four or more? Uh, if you want to pull a Greg, did you call six right backs here? Who do you have, Braden? But that is a good point. I expect that a lot of people's 26-man rosters are going to have different configurations in terms of positions. I'm curious if you went with a different positional configuration than I did. I think it's possible, given what we saw at the last uh, World Cup. I went a little bit different. Only four fullbacks here. Sorry, Greg, we're not bringing four right backs. Uh, and we actually moved from the hardest position to pick the goalkeepers to the easiest one, right back. There's no need to talk about it. It's Sergio Destin to Joe Scali. If worst comes to worst and one of them is injured, Brian Reynolds probably comes in but i'm hoping that won't happen dest will be back he will have played a year and a half since the injury scally hopefully will be playing at a very high level i mean he's still such a young player was olympics eligible and he's already starting week in week out in the bundesliga i have no issues with either one of them as our starter and it should be them on the right side on the left it gets a little bit more tricky we all know that jedi robinson's going to be the starter unless something catastrophic happens or maybe who knows one of our our young left backs has one of the craziest rises we've ever seen and overtakes them but it's jedi and and one more really it could be christopher lund he's the current backup such a young player i did debate having him here i think he will be a Serie A player or an equivalent level by 2026 it could be caleb wiley we know he's gonna play for strasbourg in Ligue 1 this season he'll probably be a top five league player by that time as well john tolkien maybe was it was very impressive at the olympics but ultimately i actually went for nathaniel brown a player who's not necessarily american just yet he's still playing for germany's youth teams i just don't really see a path for him to get into germany's senior national team and i think the lure of a world cup appearance a roster spot in 2026 is going to be too much for him to pass up on especially since it would be representing a country that's hosting it so i think he will ultimately take our offer and he's playing for frankfurt this season i think he's going to have a pretty key role for them the next two years and ultimately he's going to be the best backup left back option we have i truly believe that the question is really does he break into the germany team or would he even call up except to call it for the U.S. because we all know Balogun didn't in the 2022 World Cup. So maybe Nathaniel Brown does something differently. Maybe he does the same. Who knows? Uh, what do you have? If we had uh, Jurgen Klinsmann back at the helm, I would 100% choose Nathaniel Brown. And I will just say this. I think he's better than any of our prospects. Uh, I, I really think so. But I've gone with it. I think will happen. Destin Scali, go without saying. Both of them will be at a high level. It would be kind of a toss-up who's doing better at that point. Uh, and then on the left, Jedi, I don't think anyone will have a rise. I don't think we have anyone really that, that could be a, a Premier League level left back, one of the best in the league. So he has a spot there secured. And I was really puzzled on who to pick. I think it would be might be John Token. I'm picking him because I think that he's, his game is improving. If he does move in December, he still gets, what, a full season and a half uh, in Europe to maybe get better. Even if he steps up or not, goes up to a division, it remains to be seen where he'll go. But I think he'll be there in the roster. I, I trust him as a backup i think it's fine hopefully uh, honestly loon can step up i think they're in a very similar level right now and then for this well moving on to the center back spray in a very tough position again kind of like the goalkeepers we need everyone to step up we have one guy that's kind of for sure a lock in in the roster who do you have well, I think this is where we could potentially see some roster configuration differences because we all know for Copa America, we took five center backs. I'm only going to go with four. I did want to go with five, but ultimately when you look at the player pool, I don't think there's five center backs who are deserving of going to the World Cup. I don't really even think there's more than one or two, to be completely honest with you. We all know the one, you hinted at him, Chris Richards, he's gonna be our best center back for so many years to come. He's the only one that's truly locked into the roster right now, which is very concerning, to be honest. Tim Ream obviously has been his partner, but he just went to MLS in two years. Maybe he was good. he's good enough now. I think if the World Cup was this summer, we definitely would have called him like we did for Copa. But in two years time, he's gonna be 38 i just can't see it really maybe as a locker room guy maybe he would be that fifth center back and i wouldn't necessarily hate that he's a great leader i could see him maybe being a, a good coach one day even but i just don't think it'll happen i'm going for a, a different player as the experienced guy and it's one that a lot of fans won't like i'm going for walker zerman i think he showed it at the olympics show that he's still at a capable level in two years yeah maybe he'll be a little bit up there i think he'll be 32 but center backs do mature later and at 32 for a 
attacker is a little bit old but for a center back it seems to be a, a pretty solid age towards the end of his prime i think he's going to be one of the best center backs in mls probably playing at a higher level than tim ream will be and i think he showed at the olympics that he's a good leader as well so i'm gonna have him there he probably won't be the captain hopefully he doesn't get any any minutes but i think he'll be there as a experienced guy in the locker room we need some of those at every position group really and then for the other ones, for Chris Richards' partner, I'm going for Mark McKenzie. I think he will probably be a Bundesliga player by then. There's been a lot of links to have him going there uh, with a, a couple of clubs, Stuttgart, Mainz. It remains to be seen whether that move will go through or not. But I do think he'll be playing in a top five league, most likely Bundesliga by 2026. And ultimately, just compared to the other options, there's no one else. And then uh, for the last one, I'm going for a, a bit of a bold take. I'm going for Nokai Banks, the U20 center back from Augsburg. Hopefully he will also be playing in the Bundesliga for Augsburg's first team. I expect he'll make his debut for them this season and then hopefully if all goes to plan he'll be a, st a starter, instrument, and rotation player for them in 2026 and then who knows from then it's worth a shot because I think he's truly our only elite level center back prospect and when you compare him with the other options of Austin Trusty might not even be starting for Sheffield in the championship this season CCV we all know how horrible he was and he's still stuck at Celtic and then Miles Robinson of course I just don't see a lot of good options and I think this is the perfect position group for a young player like Noah Kai Banks to come in and really take one of those spots maybe even challenge for a starting role Interesting, interesting. Some people may not know who Nokai Banks is. I'll heavily suggest you guys to check out who he is. If by any chance you still haven't heard of him. I think this was the position group that I had the most trouble with. And uh, honestly, looking at this, I think one is for sure. Chris Richards, uh, I think he'll be locked in. For the next ones, it really is a toss up. I've gone with Mark McKenzie. I think by then, just based on how his development has gone i think he needs to leave he will probably leave this summer there's still time and i think with the season and a half in uh, well basically two seasons actually uh two seasons i think he can probably establish himself as a guy that to be part of the roster he has the speed uh, he'll probably adapt and improve in every other area hopefully he does so and for the next two ones honestly i get the point of the experience but I don't think we need that experience or this. We have other guys in the group and uh, I'll, I'll respect to Walker, but I don't think he'll be there. I've gone with, honestly, this is the one of the craziest stakes. I think the Max Deeks will be there. I think that one will, might be the case. For the fourth one, I was really debating between Neil or another guy to come up out of nowhere. I'm going to pick Grayson Tony right here. Crazy pick. But I think that this year he likely be in Regional League again or maybe be there was a link of him being loaned to a third division club if he does well there goes to the second Bundesliga and uh, has a good season you never know I think we need someone to step up we don't have anybody really I think CCV I don't want to see him again I know he'll probably be there I would probably pick him right here if I was being realistic but I'm gonna go with a little bit of a bold take right here picking to Tony crazy crazy uh, center back lineup right there really young but I think we will see that because we need to just renovate everything in that position and moving on now to the guys that will be anchoring the midfield we'll group all of the midfielders together uh, so who do you have on midfield if you want to leave the tents uh, for after who do you have on the eights and sixes on this roster Braden? Detoni over Banks is interesting, but we've seen Byron products do well. Richards, Taylor Booth, Malik Tillman, maybe all three of them will end up being in this roster. Who knows? But going on to the midfield, uh, and I'll just firstly address a player who's not here that I wanted to pick, and I even considered picking as a fifth center back because I think in the long run that is his national team future, Leonard Maloney. I wanted to have him here, but you're going to see I already have three sixes in the roster, and it just doesn't really make sense to pick a fourth to play out of position at center back. I ultimately went with Walker Zerman for the experience factor. Over him, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he makes this roster in some capacity. Maybe there's an injury to Tyler Adams again. I think it, there's no surprise that I have him in this roster. I mean, he was our captain at the last World Cup. He's a, a very good player on his day. Now, granted, his day doesn't happen a lot because he's always on the sidelines, but hopefully he'll be back fit and healthy for the next couple of seasons leading up to the World Cup. And if he's there, I would probably expect him to still be the captain. So he's really, uh, he pencils his name in as long as he's healthy. And then Johnny Cardoso, of course, probably the highest potential six or eight that we have playing at Real Betis, such a high level. 
I expect him to make a transfer after this season. He's going to be one of the best DMs in La Liga this season and then take a step up to a, one of the top clubs in the world. Uh, I truly think it'll happen and he'll probably be a starter for us in 2026, whether that's in a double pivot to accommodate Adams or whether he's the only six, I don't think it really matters, but he will be starting in 2026 for us. And then the other six I brought is Tanner Testman. I think he's going to be a Serie A player or some equivalent level. I mean, who knows? His agents probably will take him to China if the money is there. But I think that he's going to be playing at a high enough level. He showed it in the Olympics. He's one of our, our brightest potential midfielders. There's spots there to be taken, uh, especially since how underwhelming the midfield was in Copa America. And I just think that he'll be there. I think he's going to be take a, a good enough leap over the next two years to earn a spot. And, and then that leaves me with three, actually, center midfielders. One of them, it's pretty self-explanatory. Actually, two of them are Weston McKenney and Eunice Musa. There have been the eights for who knows how long for us they were the eights in the world cup in 2022 they're going to be the same thing here hopefully both of them don't start i think it, it benefits our midfield if musa maybe is on the bench mckinney's on the bench we'll see what the trajectory is in two years time hopefully mckinney can just figure out his club situation because if he ends up going somewhere bad there's danger of him not even being in this roster at all but i have faith that he'll find a good move hopefully fiorentina and then make the roster as one of our best players as we know he has the quality to be Musa, he's still so young, been in the team for so long. He's going to continue to improve with age. And then for the other one, I went with a bit of a rogue shout. I'm wearing his kit right now. I'm going for Brendan Aronson in the midfield because I think there are spots open for, again, a, a bit of a, a tweak in roster configuration. You could have given this extra spot to a defender. Uh, or you could have given it to a winger, a striker. Who knows? I think ultimately we will carry eight midfielders. And Brendan makes sense because he's so versatile. He can play on the wings. He can play as a 10. He can play as an eight. Although I'd probably rather see him as a 10 than an eight. But I think he just brings the experience as well. He's been part of the locker room for so long. It's just hard to, for me to see him dropped. I debated actually putting his brother in over him. But ultimately went for Brendan. And those are the six. Six is an eight. So I brought, obviously, we'll get to the tens. I think those are going to be pretty easy, though. Yeah, well, this group right here, it's very tough to pick because I think it's, well, the midfield, as we know, it's the position we are more more stacked in, not stacked in crazy talent, but we have a lot of guys at a similar level. And ultimately, I think it will be very dependent on how the manager likes to play. Uh, and uh, the manager is the one that makes the sh calls the shots. So I have a bit of a shocking taker here for some, but I've gone with Leonard Maloney. I think that he provides that solidity at the back. If we, again, World Cup, everything happens in two weeks. You need to be versatile, provide something different. I think he can be a, a center back as well. I think he will be there. I think he will have established career in the Bundesliga. I've gone with Johnny Cardozo, who I think is a very talented player. And I think by then he may be transitioning more to an eight. I, I don't know. I think that his future might be there. Really good on the ball. I've gone with Tenor Tessman, who is, again, really good on the ball. Very similar. I'm curious to see how Johnny and Tessman would be. I think it would be the most technical uh, pivot that we could have. Not the fastest guys, but they can anticipate play quite well. I think it could work. And I think he will be playing. Uh, as of this recording, now Bologna is back in, but we don't know. I think by then he will be in Serie A, definitely playing for a good club. And his development is one that's good. Uh, for I think he provides a lot as well if he comes off the bench. So I've gone with Maloney, Johnny, Tessman so far. And then I've gone with uh, McKinney and Musa. So the guy that's out is Tyler Adams, actually. So breaking up the leadership council that we've seen in the previous World Cup, I think we need to, to rejuvenate the, the mentality. I think that his career, looking at the injuries, the type of injuries that he's had, he's going to be back now from a small surgery, but then all of your muscles, you need to get back in shape. And I think with these guys, with Maloney being an established guy in Bundesliga for quite a while, a new manager that he's not buddies with, Johnny and Tessman developing well and being better on the ball than him and McKinney and Musa who are better eights than him I think Adam's going to be the odd man out a uh, big shot a big call right here I know some people in the comments may not like it but this is what I've seen and I think will be best for us to have a, a sort of solid core for this tournament moving on to the tens the guys that are the creators the ball carriers of the team who have you picked for that one I'll be brief with this one. It's Giorena and Malik Tillman. They pick themselves. You can argue Brendan Aronson in my roster also kind of fits into that role because that is his best position as a 10. I, I see him more uh, as an 8 like we saw against Canada back in the Nations League final. But those are the players. It's easy as that. If you have anyone else, it's probably because of injury. Yeah, it's just this light tweak. Uh, I have both of them, the Gio and Tillman. I mean, they'll be there. But it's this light tweak because of uh, how I left Adams out and uh, how I have 
the rest of my roster here. I have Paxton Aronson. I've, uh, you've uh, debated putting him in. I've included him more in the 10 because he can be a false nine as well. And I think that by then people will see he's not only tenacious like Brandon, but I think he adds a little bit more. He has more spice to his game. And uh, I think he can be a guy to come off the bench, someone to be part of the program for the following World Cup and learn from. So I have Paxton there included in the 10s group. Moving on to the wings where we need someone to step up. We, I expect to see some some big calls right here. Yeah, I think this one, goalkeepers and center backs are not only the positions that we desperately need someone to break through, but it's going to be the toughest ones to predict. Uh, the first one picks itself. He's the best player in our team and will be for the next probably 10 years. Christian Pulisic, Captain America, he's going to be there. I actually have him on the right side, though. Uh, I think it's kind of a big call, but I have him as a right winger, maybe on the left, who knows, but he's been playing there for AC Milan. He's going to play the 10 this season, which is interesting i think it maybe suits his game but also could hurt his national team career a little bit just because he'll be playing out of position i mean we've, we saw him on both wings actually this summer for the usmnt but never as a 10 maybe that's something that a new manager experiments with who knows but with reyna and Tillman there i doubt it i have him on the wing as his backup, it pains me to say it because I hope someone overtakes him, but I do have Tim Weah. I just think also the experience he has maybe as a wing back, as a full back, it allows you to tweak formations a little bit. If you want to play a back five, again, we don't know who the new manager is going to be yet. Maybe they want to play with a back five, and I think Weah probably fits that a little bit better than some of our other winger options. So he's there, and again, he has the experience. He's been with the team for so long. He's one of the main guys in the locker room. So... I think it, it's just too unrealistic to leave him out. I, I wanted to put in an up and coming young guy there like Griffin Yao, but ultimately I decided against it. On the left, uh, two big calls here. First, I'll, I'll go for Kevin Paredes as the backup, actually. I think he's going to break into the roster. He's been a Bundesliga rotational starter this past season. I think he, this is the year where he'll truly break into the Wolfsburg team as a full time starter. He'll probably have two seasons under his belt by 2026 as a full-time starter at Wolfsburg. Maybe by then, who knows, after a good couple seasons there and hopefully a good 2026 World Cup, he'll get a bigger transfer to one of the cl top clubs in the Bundesliga or maybe even another league. But I think his performance at the Olympics shows he has the potential he was one of our best players there, and I mean, he's been one of our highest potential youngsters for quite some time. He's even started for the national team in the past. He's no stranger to the program, so I think he will ultimately break into the roster. And then for the other one, my second dual national pick here, I'm going to go for Luka Koleosho. I think that he will end up picking us. I just struggle to see him fitting into Italy's team culture-wise. I don't think he really has any Italian roots, even though... Maybe he has the passport. I think that's about it. If you asked him to speak Italian, I know Yuri in the past, you've spoken Italian to him in videos, uh, but I don't think he would even understand it. I think, I mean, even if you look at the things he puts on his Instagram stories, it's very clear that he's culturally American. I think that is ultimately the choice he will end up making. And like Nathaniel Brown, a World Cup spot in the roster at home in 2026, it's just too much to turn down. I think it's one of the biggest selling pitches we have for dual nationals, and I think he'll accept it. And I, I have him starting on the left wing. Maybe he'll be on the right, Plistic on the left. Who knows? I don't really care. As long as we have those two starting, I think our wings are in great hands. Yeah, I mean... Uh one of those guys goes without saying it's Captain, Captain America. Whether he'll be wearing the captain's armband or not, it remains to be seen. But he'll definitely be there. And he's one of the de facto captains of the team just because of his stature as a player. So Blissick, no issues with that. He's our best player for sure. We'll be, well, hopefully someone else overtakes him. But I think he'll be the best player in this roster as well. I've also gone with Cody Osho. So uh, we both thought alike right here. I think that it's just a matter of time, really. I mean, you look at the way he's been following the Olympics. The guy's American. There, there's no way. And I think that in Italy, there's a very high sense. I'll try to word this in a nice way. And a very high sense of uh, cultural, honestly, just trying to preserve the culture and to keep the Italian roots. I think that it's very difficult for him to, to break into to the team. Not only because of the background, because even in the past, some players like Camoranesi in Argentina who won the World Cup for Italy. It took a while for him to get chances. So I think that it's tough for him to break in there. And uh, on the other side right here, well, not on the other side, the guys to be back up to these two because I also have them inverted. I think they can both play in both sides. They'll be our best players and where I think the goals can come from. These guys can create things. I have two guys that I really like. They played in the Olympics. I have Griffin Yao and Paredes. They've been teammates since uh, DC United. Paredes, I think, is going to be on most people's roster, but for, so I don't need to justify that too much. Like you said, he'll be there. He has the, the kick to his game to do that. And then Griffin Yao, I think he has always done things the tough way. 
in his career throughout his career and having to battle it out and i think that he will be by then a player that's coming to attention and maybe he's not at the best of clubs but if he gets a chance in any nations leagues any tournaments any gold cup I think he will impress people enough where he'll overtake Wea, who I think by then will probably be a guy that still doesn't really have a position that if people would have a keep it in mind what he did in the Copa America and also just playing wise when he's not playing against CONCACAF guys, I think we need better and I think we need guys that are hungrier and I think these both of these guys are hungrier than him. Moving on to the forwards, the guys that we rely on to score the goals. This was a huge problem we had in the previous World Cup. Do you think that we keep the three that we have right now or do you have any surprises here, Braden? Man, I would love to see Griffin yeah, break into the team, but I, I just I couldn't reason with leaving out someone who's probably going to be a Juventus starter this season, and hopefully he keeps his spot. I don't have much confidence in him, but I, I hope the best for him. Hopefully he's still on the roster in 2026. For the strikers, this is another one that was a bit tricky. I, I think there's only four names here that you can realistically consider for probably three positions. I have three left. I assume you also have three left. Most people will have three strikers. We kind of had four in Copa America, one of them, Haji Wright, was playing as a winger, and he is actually on my roster. I have him here just because, again, the positional versatility, if we need him to deputize as a winger, maybe someone gets hurt, maybe Paredes is having a bad tournament, maybe Way is having a bad tournament, maybe he punches someone else and gets suspended for the rest of the World Cup. We have Haji right there, who can become a, a very reliable backup winger option. I mean, he played so well there for Coventry this past season. I expect him to continue to do the same. He'll probably be a Premier League player by then. Uh, I have a pretty reasonable confidence in saying that it could even be with Coventry. Maybe they'll get promoted. Maybe it'll be with someone else. Who knows? But I think he'll be on the roster there. And then one of the only positives we can take away from Copa America is that I truly believe we found our nine. Fuller and Balogun, what a tournament he had despite it being cut short due to some incompetence from basically everyone else on the team and the coaching staff. But Great tournament, great performances from him. I think he's the nine for the future that he did show promise to be. Bit of a slow start at Monaco, bit of a slow start to the national team as well, with Ricardo Pepe even coming in and scoring so many goals off the bench. He is the backup that I have to Fuller and Balogun. I think it just makes too much sense. Hopefully he'll still be at PSV as their full-time starter. If not, I have confidence that he'll go somewhere, get a good transfer, and be a starter at a high enough level in 2026 that I just couldn't leave him off, really. It's hard to process, and it's hard to leave off Josh Sargent, too, because he just scores so many goals for Norwich. He'll probably also be a Premier League player by that time, but given my roster configuration, I just didn't have a place for him. It's tough. I'd like to see him there, but ultimately, this is the this is the good, nice problem to have with finally having a, a strong depth, uh, deep player pool. And unfortunately, Sergeant just misses out for me. Yeah, we have a different front three, so this is nice. It makes it for a little bit of a, a nice video right here. I've gone with Balogun, who I'll be honest, I don't have the highest hopes for him, for him at Monaco. Uh, they're looking for a striker, but I don't care about that because for the national team, he's had that breakthrough tournament, and I don't even mind if he's a guy that just performs for us uh, as a safety net for him while he's at Monaco. I think the manager is not his biggest fan, but I, I don't I don't think that will really affect him. He'll probably get the confidence from the squad as well that he's the number nine, and I, regardless of club form, he'll be the starter, in my opinion, if all things go into accordance. So I have Balogun right there as the starter. I also have Haji Wright, who I think, I, I thought it was being a little bit clever here picking him, but you also picked him i think he adds that something extra for the wings uh, has the work rate by then will probably be at a higher level experienced player as well hey he's scored in the world cup as well but i think that he'll probably be there and for the third one not necessarily in order he may be ahead of haji just because of, he's a nine as well i've gone as josh Sargent. i've left out ricardo pepe just because i think player for player talent for talent you put a 1v1 and what you can put into balance and what will be and 26, I think that Sargent will, I hope he has done a step up in his career. And Pepe, I just think player for player, Sargent is a little bit better than him. So I think that he might still be in the Eredivisie right there. Hopefully he's breaking through and left the zombie on the bench or retired already. But I think that Sargent right here makes the final cut on my roster. So... Let us know in the comments below, guys. What do you think? Very hard to call. Obviously, this is completely pertaining to the manager we're going to point to. That guy can have his own configurations, but should make for a fun discussion with you guys in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you next time.